Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT grammar questions out of this book here, the official SAT study guide. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 410. Please turn to it, page 410, and today is our lesson number 5. This is, this is a series of 18 questions that deal with uh, multiple choice uh, uh, grammar questions that are, there are 5 underlined portions, 4 underlined portions and so forth. There are 18 of them, as I explained to you yesterday and day before yesterday. The first six are approximately easy. Uh, the first approximate, what I meant is that approximately first six are easy, the middle six are medium, and last six are hard. Or to keep it simple for us, the first page that we saw, page number 409, they were all easy questions. On page 410, the first column on the left hand side, there were medium questions. And today we're going to do the second column, which are hard questions. Number 25. As their brain matures neurologically, as their brain matures neurologically, now, so nothing wrong with this part. As their, as their brains mature neurologically, there is nothing wrong with it. Infants become, infants become more capable, more capable, infants become more capable to Distinguish. You don't have to read. Of, you don't have to read the rest of it. Just ask yourself: Does it sound right to you? This one falls in the last category, right here. The idioms we talked about yesterday. We, I, I, yesterday was a long lecture where we talked about what kind of things to look for in the exam, in the grammar questions. These are the five items you should look for. You should. You must always go in this sequence. Look for subject work, subject verb agreement. Make sure the subject of the sentence agrees with the verb that they use. Look for the Tenses, make sure the entire set sentence in the, in the, is in the right tense. If it starts out in the past tense, it must remain in the past tense. Tense is not an issue here. Look for adverbs. There are no adverbs here. Look for singular plural. That's not an issue here. The issue here is that it's the wrong idiom that is being used. The idiom here is, one is capable. One is capable. We do not go around saying, I was about to say, one does not go around saying that one is capable to do something. The idiom, the proper idiom is one, one is capable of doing something. That's the proper idiom. One is capable of doing something, not to do something. Do you understand? I am perfectly, I'm perfect, I'm perfectly capable of running fast. I am perfectly capable of swimming. You would not say I'm perfectly capable to swim. It wouldn't be a right idiom. It's a matter of idiom. It's just the idioms are very annoying as I explained yesterday. It's because you simply have to know them. There are no rules there that you can follow. Do you understand? Don't worry about him. Don't worry about him. He's perfectly capable of driving. He's perfectly capable of driving. You don't have to worry about him. You wouldn't say he's perfectly capable. You wouldn't say he's perfectly capable to drive. It wouldn't sound right. That's what's wrong with it here. As their brain mature neurologically, I forgot what this was, these people, whatever this is, is capable of, of distinguishing. There you go, of distinguishing. And that's what's wrong with it. And that's answer choice C. Answer C. Let's move on then, number 26. Number 26, I want you to... I want to warn you, it's very tricky, and I'm going to actually tell you, just to make it easy, it has to do with, oh, it actually, actually it has to do with the very first one, subject verb agreement, which is the very first thing you should look for. It has to do with subject verb agreement, but whenever they're testing this concept, listen very carefully, whenever they're testing this concept, they separate the subject of the sentence from the actual verb that's supposed to go with the subject of the sentence. They separate these two parts as far apart as they possibly can by putting in mumbo or jumbo in between. 
putting in all sorts of crap in between just to make sure that you lose track of what the subject of the sentence is. Let's see what happens here. Home of the world's largest chocolate manufacturing plant. Home of the world's largest chocolate manufacturing plant. Hershey, Pennsylvania was originally originally known as Dairy Church, but its name was changed in 1906 to honor one of Voila, one of their most famous residents. Now, now that I've written the whole sentence on the blackboard, I'm going to read one more time. Home to the world's, first I'm going to read the sentence the way it is written, and then we're going to, then we're going to look at everything that we can throw out. Home to the world's largest manufacturing, home to the world's largest chocolate manufacturing plant, Hershey, Pennsylvania, was originally known as Dairy Church, but its name, but, right here, but its name, but its name, I'm giving you a hint, was changed in 1906 to honor one of their most famous resident, residents, to which you will say, what the hell, one of its most famous residents, whose resident, the resident of the Who's resident? What is the sentence about? The sentence is not about the fact that it's the home of the largest chocolate manufacturing plant. That's not the point of the sentence. The sentence is about Hershey, Pennsylvania. That's the subject of the sentence. That's the subject of the sentence. Now, everything else that you see in between, the, the fact that it was called Dairy Church and then and was name was changed and blah, 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 all of this is not relevant to us. All of this is not relevant to us. Hershey, Pennsylvania changed its name to honor one. Hershey, Pennsylvania changed, changed their name to honor its hero. Tell me if you can find Hershey, Pennsylvania changed their name. No, not their name. Its name. Just like here. This, this, just like, actually I erase it right here, just like here, they use the word it's itself, it's in the sentence, it's in the sentence, they, they use the word it's in the middle of the sentence, but towards the very end, they switch to there, and your job is to pick up on that trick. One more time, I'm going to read it to you, it says, Hershey, Pennsylvania was originally known as Dairy Church, but its name, its name was changed, why was it changed? To honor its hero. That's all, to honor its hero. We're talking about Hershey, Pennsylvania. The fact that they're honoring more than one hero is besides the point. Do you understand? The answer is D. The answer is D. Let's do the next one, number 27. The valuable string instruments in the display, the valuable string instruments, keep in mind that it is plural, it might come in handy. So the subject of the sentence is instruments, plural. The fact that they are valuable and the fact that they are string is not, is not something we are interested in. What we are interested in the, is in the fact that it is plural, it's instruments. In this display, all more than 300 years old, all more than 300 years old, so far, so good. There is nothing wrong with it. Were, you see, were, were. Why were? Because it's plural. Now, had this been underlined, had this been underlined, there's a good chance that instead of putting were, it would have been was. And your job is to make sure that you understand that this instrument, it has to be were. But it's not underlined. It's not underlined because it's correct. Were, so far, so good. Where were we? were carefully crafted by artisans famous in their day 
but long since forgotten. They were crafted by these artisans, famous in their days. They were very famous, very renowned in their days, but they have long since been forgotten. There is nothing wrong with this sentence. This sentence is fine the way it is. Answer is E. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. Number 28. The penultimate one. The penultimate one. The regularly scheduled conference between my tutor and me. The regularly scheduled conference between my tutor and me. So far so good. Everything is fine so far. This is this is the B part, which is fine. The regularly scheduled, which is fine. This is the A part. Is said. There is nothing wrong with E. Uh, is there is nothing wrong with is because they talk about meeting only one. Schedule. They use the word meeting. Singular. The regularly scheduled conference, rather they call it. That's why I have a C here. The regularly scheduled conference or regularly scheduled meeting. The point is that it's singular. There is no S here. It's singular, which is why it is meeting. You see, it's fine. C is okay. There's nothing wrong with C. It's set for Friday, which is also fine. But my low grades. But here's the part. But my low grades. Grades in the chemistry, in the chemistry, requires, you see, you see a problem? My low grade, now let's forget about all of the things, let's forget about all of the things, and now it reads, my low grades, my, my grades, my grades requires, no, this verb has to agree with this subject. My low grades require, my low grades require, not requires, the answer is D. So here the problem is, again, subject verb agreement, subject here is, the, is plural, subject is plural, the verb that they're using is in a singular form, requires. Had it been one grade, it would have been fine, my grade requires something, but my grades require, require, me to arrange an earlier meeting because of the fact that I bombed so badly in so many classes, grades, you see, and that necessitates an earlier meeting. My low grades require. The very last one. What does the word penultimate mean before I go to the very last one? Penultimate is a very fancy way of saying next to the last, second last. Penultimate means second last. When I was doing number 28, I said uh, we were about to do a penultimate question, second to the last question, penultimate. We learned this word, I remember it distinctly, because it appears, this word appears on the SAT once in a while. Then what, oh actually we just talked about it, what it means, it means second to the last. On day number 11, if you're interested in learning this word along with some other interesting and useful words for the SAT to improve your vocabulary, just type in SAT vocabulary words, day 11, and we'll pop right up. The last one. There is probably no more. There is probably no story more dramatic than. There is probably. No story. More dramatic. This is fine. Which is C. There is. There is nothing wrong with that part. That's A. Probably no, this is B, that, that, that's fine. So far there is nothing wrong with the sentence. There is probably no story more dramatic, there is nothing wrong with it so far. Then, then what? Then, baseball's great hitter. To which you will say, what the hell? This has to do with parallel structure. We cannot go around comparing a story there's, there's probably no, no story more dramatic. We're talking about a story. We cannot go around comparing a story to a person. We, can go about, we, we could go about comparing a story, this particular story, to this baseball, this baseball player's story, but not a baseball player himself. 
this has to be changed. There is probably no story more dramatic than the than, and what we will put here is than, than the story of. This is what is missing. Than the story of baseball's great hitter. There is no story more dramatic than the story of than the story of this particular baseball player hitter. Do you understand? Otherwise, you're going to go around comparing a person to a story. They have done. They did this before also, where we were comparing the paintings of one person. Where we were comparing one painter to not another painter, but we were comparing one painter's one, or rather, we were comparing the paintings of one painter, not to the paintings of another painter, but the sentence was comparing the paintings of one painter to another painter. You cannot go around comparing paintings to a person. You can compare a person to person, you can compare paintings of one person to the paintings of the other person, but you cannot go around comparing one person to another person's painting. And that was question number 21, if you recall yesterday. Number 21, they did the same thing. Number 29 is similar to 21 that we did yesterday. So that was the end of that. I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.